since last night, when we were here, we have been hearing people saying that the tomb is empty. We will find out if it is true. Good morning. Good morning for those of you who participate online, for those of you who are here in person. It's a joy and a delight that we are able to gather in this place by the Holy Spirit as the church comes and gathers to celebrate that the promise that the Lord will be with us forever is true. In the, on this Easter Sunday, we remind each other that we are gathering this place as an extension of the welcome of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that true, we ask and pray that each one of us will be enacting that welcome in our daily lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, all are welcome. This morning, I would like to invite, for those of you who are here for the first time or one more time, to remember that there are these connection cards that you can find in front of you or next to you where you can leave your information and be in communication and in connection with the congregation. And the other side, you can leave also prayers so that this congregation can be in prayer with you and for you, and in that way, leave out that welcome of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there, today, we have an over, overflow space in the chapel outside, and for those of you who are in the chapel, if there is any one of you, right, uh, just know that even though we are in two spaces in the building, we are united in the same spirit, and we pray and I hope that we can experience that unity today. Please uh, follow the instructions of our hosts who will be guiding you through the service. Also, I would like to uh, tell you that um, since this is a longer service and a fuller uh, space today, in fact, I start feeling a little nervous with so many people in the, in, in the sanctuary now. The thing is that when I get nervous, I, t I, I speak more and I talk longer. So just be ready for that. No, no, just kidding, but I'm nervous. I'm nervous, seriously. Uh, also, feel free that uh, because of the length of the service, that if you need uh, some time to help your children or you yourself need a little rest or a stretch, do not hesitate to go to the narthex. Please feel home. This is the place where we are gathered and we walk with each other and we support one another. Um, for those who have children, and we call them young worshipers in this congregation and are here for the first time, we invite you to come to the playground where uh, our young worshipers can have some time. There are some things that they can do. They can color, they can play, they can be with other young worshipers and be part of the service here. So um, I invite you to, to, do, to do that. Also, I would like to invite you that, um, to communicate, to, um, to participate in your bulletins. There are parts that we will be reading together to lift up our voices and celebrate that the Lord is risen. Are we ready for worship? Yes. Kind of, but let's start. <laughs> let's prepare our hearts and our minds uh, and our bodies as we prepare for this gathering of the church. Please rise as you are able. <clears throat> Yesterday, we thought death had won. Yesterday, we thought all was lost. Yesterday, we thought Christ was gone. But not today. Today, Today we know that love has won. Today we know that hope is real. Today we know that Christ is here. We have a reason to hope. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Today. The women at the tomb heard, he is not here. This is not a reminder of death, but of God's promise, new life. Like them, we need constant reminders of God's endless grace. Every prayer echoes the message. God's love never runs out. Let's run to God with open arms, live authentically, and live in the glorious light of Easter. 
Please join me now in this litany of confession. The stone is rolled away. We assume it is a mistake. The angels say he is not here. We assume their news is fake. The women tell the story, but we do not want to hear it. Peter runs to the tomb, but we do not understand. Forgive us, God, for thinking an empty tomb is nothing more than a prank. Forgive us. Forgive us for pushing away reasons to hope when you are alive and well in the world. Unravel the threads of our unbelief. Amen. The angels tell the women, remember what Jesus told you. So my siblings in Christ, remember this. You are seen, you are forgiven, you are held in God's grace. All of this is true. Grace and mercy abound for you. Remember this and we say, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Risen Lord, on that first Easter, doubt clouded the disciples' hearts. 
Yet, amidst the confusion, the news of your victory echoed. Help us, like them, to hear anew. Open our ears to the joyful symphony of hallelujahs. Open our minds to embrace the wonder of your resurrection. Open our hearts to believe the unbelievable truth. You are alive. May this Easter ignite a fire of faith within us, drawing us closer, just as you drew Peter near. God of new beginnings, fill us with your hope-filled message. Speak to us now. We listen, hearts open and ready, and we say, Amen. Please be seated. morning. Like Peter, I would run if I could, stop the car, pump my arms, take the church steps two at a time, all to know, did it happen? Did it really happen? Is evil no match for love? I'd slide down the center aisle and grab the mic to ask the angels, the heavens, the children, were the stories true? And in response, the choir would sing, Hallelujah. The children would flower the cross. The preacher would tell me the stone was rolled away. The people would pass the peace and welcome strangers and make room in the pews. And with faith over doubt, I would hope. For I imagine that all of that ordinary holiness would be enough for Peter and it would be enough for me. A reading from Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every people, anyone who fears him and practices righteousness is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life.
invite you to join me with the gospel. I'm in the center of the, of the sanctuary. Don't think that I left. I'm still here. This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. And we say, Lord. At the crack of dawn on Sunday, the women came to the tomb, carrying the burial spices they had prepared. They found the entrance stone rolled back from the tomb. So they walked in, but inside they, could find, they couldn't find the body of the master Jesus. They were puzzled, wondering what to make of this. Then, out of nowhere, it seemed two men, light cascading over them, stood there. The women were awestruck and bowed to, down to them in worship. The men said, why are you looking for the living one in the cemetery, in a cemetery? He is not here, but raised up. Remember how he told you when you were still back in Galilee that he had to be handed over to sinners, be killed on a cross, and in three days rise up? Then they remember Jesus' words. They left the tomb and broke the news of all these to the eleven and the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the, and the other women with them kept telling these things to the apostles. But the apostles didn't believe a word of it, thought they were making it all up. But Peter jumped jumped to his feet and ran to the tomb. He stooped to look, to look in and saw a few grave clothes. That's all. He walked away puzzled, shaking his head. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated, and I would like to invite our young worshipers to come to join me, joining me here at the front. We can sit here on this first step first, because we are going to move in a moment. A You're a five. Yes, you will have communion soon. That's right. We are going to do first communion soon. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? I'm fine. Thank you for asking that. I am fine. A little nervous. Too many people today, right? Are you nervous like me today? Kind of, right? Well, today I want to ask you a few questions because, first of all, what are we celebrating today? Easter. Easter that's right. Who of you were able to... Who, you, you have a lot of Easter stuff. We have two here, right? So let me ask you, were you able to come to any of the services on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, the last three days? Were you here? Some of you were here, right? Were you here? And what do you notice different from those days? Do you remember what happened those days? What, what looked different here in the sanctuary? What is that? The cross was covered, right? We couldn't see the cross uh, that on, on, on Thursday night and then all Friday. What else did you notice different here? Because we were thinking about Jesus when Jesus was in the tomb, in the cross. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of plants. That's right. There is a lot of plants. And not all, that, not all of them are flowers, right? Have you noticed that? There are a few flowers, but not many flowers today. That's right. Today we celebrate Easter. That means that we celebrate that Jesus is in the tomb, dead? No. He is alive and he is risen. So that's why you hear the people in the church say, 
he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And all churches say that. So let's do this. Let's see if this congregation knows how to say that. So we will, don't let, let them hear this right now, okay? Don't let them hear now. But I'm going to tell you only. Let's all of us here in the front say, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. And see what the people in the congregation say. Are you ready? Let's practice just, let's say, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. I think that's fine. Now we are going to say it very loud, and we are going to see if the congregations know how to respond, okay? One, two, three. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Christ. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Do they know what to do? Yeah, right? Because this is what congregations do. But one of the things that we remember is... Why do you think that happened when Jesus came out of the tomb? How do you think that the disciples felt? Were they happy? What was that? Happy? What else? Do, they, do you think that they knew everything, that they know exactly what to do? What is that, Asher? They were excited. They were excited. That's right. Why do you think they were excited? Go ahead. Because he was not dead anymore. So one of the things that we celebrate on Easter, it is how you and I can remind people about that. That we are not left alone. That Jesus is with us. But can we see Jesus here with us? No. But is Jesus with us? Yes. Yes. You need to explain that to me. Thank you, Asher. Thank you. These are dangerous. Thank you. So that's right. We cannot see Jesus, but we know that Jesus is with us. So Jesus invites us and tells us that when we believe that we are like the Easter people, the people of the resurrection, we need to live our lives in ways that people can see that Jesus is really with us. So today, you were saying there are not many flowers, but there are many plants in the sanctuary, right? And let me ask the congregation. And your congregation, do you, do you notice that? What flowers do we normally have on Easter Sunday? Easter lilies, Easter lilies but we, I don't have any here today. So why, why is that? There's one there. I didn't see it. Uh, the bag. It's maybe in the bag. Well, let's see what I have. Let's move around the, the garden here. Follow me. I'm stuck with my robe here. Let's follow me here and let's see what, what kind of plants we have here. Um, let's come. Can you see what kind of plants? Some of them have a little picture, but what kind of plants do we have here? Oh, a, butterfly. a butterfly. What kind of plants? Can you see the, can you see the, the, the seeds? What do you see the seeds are? Radish. Radish. Corn. Corn. Onion. Cucumber. Cucumbers. Onion. Onions. Yeah, and there are many, many things like that, many vegetables like that. Why do you think that we are having these plants instead of Easter lilies? Because it's an Easter garden. Well, that was part of the story in the gospel. That's true. But something else. Let me tell you, see, the congregation, we believe that we as congregation, we are not just to tell people, oh, Jesus, Jesus is alive, Jesus is with us, and do nothing. We believe that we as Christians, as disciples of Jesus, we are going to help people to be alive. How do people stay alive? Water. Water. What else? Huh? Food. Food. That's right. And that, do you eat vegetables? Raise your hand if you like vegetables. Well, raise your hand halfway if you l really like vegetables. Okay, raise your hand as high as you can if you really, really, really like vegetables. There are a couple of you. <laughs> Many of us like vegetables. And what we are thinking is this. Jesus wants us to share food with people so that they are alive and they can remember. You like vegetables? Wait. That we remember I that we are... I only carrots. Okay. That's, they, I like those too. But people will receive food and they can stay alive and they will hear that Jesus is really with us through the food. Can you see this picture? 
Can you see these pools here? These pools is where we are planting these vegetables. And we are going to plant them. They are out there in the, in the parking lot by the playground. You saw, Asher saw this because he comes to school. That's right. And from here, guess what this picture is? Can you see this picture? Yeah. Food. And you know what that, pic that picture comes from? That, um, it is... Ah, is where we, that's right, where, where they make the food for you in the schools. That's right, from the kitchen. That's right. And I'm going to show you this to the cameras. The pictures that you see here, my siblings in Christ, these are pictures that were taken yesterday, where the first harvest of these gardens that we believe that we are called to have to bring hope and life to the community were shared with our neighbors in need yesterday as a way to start practicing what it means to be the Easter people, the people who brings life and the, through the food, fresh food, that is good for them. So today we are going to pray, and I'm going to, uh, we are going to ask uh, Jesus. Yes. You want to help me hold this, ladies? That's the fence. He's familiar with the area here, so he is identifying the area, so the playground in the back. So let's pray together. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, we know that you are with us. We know that you invite us to help others. To remember that you are with us. We may not see you. You see us, and you lead us to be Easter people, to bring the message of life. Amen. Thank you. Let's go back to our seats, and thank you for being here. This looks like my friend here. Okay. Oh, that's your friend. <laughs> There's a picture here that Asher identified. That's... That's so great uh, to see our young worshipers learning and observing the things that happen around here in the church. Well, grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord. And we said, Amen. You know me by this time that I am no one of the happy Easter people. And the reason I say that is not because I want you to believe like me, but it is a conviction that I have come to embrace in my life because I think that my journey, faith journey, but also my personal journey, has led me to believe that Easter, the resurrection of the Lord, it is not only a date in this, uh, one more day, in the list of holidays of the calendar of our country. It is the celebration of something that we do not fully understand, but that has deep implications in the lives, not only of me as individual, of us as congregation, but for the entire creation. It is a celebration that brings to us a power of transformation and life that you and I cannot understand and maybe cannot find in anything else around us. And therefore, the only way that I can see and talk about Easter and resurrection is to say that this blessing that the disciples and the women experienced that day, that morning, it's the same blessing that today, once again, we receive. And for that, we say, He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. For the past few weeks during the Wednesday services, we were singing with the Holden Vespers the Magnificat where we were singing and retelling the story of the day when the Spirit came to Mary to tell her that she was going to have a baby. 
we were singing and we were thinking and we were reflecting that as people were asking for, for an army, for a Messiah, from a liberator, for something that will give them peace and freedom and justice, God heard the people and people responded by sending a child, by actually coming in a child named Jesus. And in the lyrics of what we were singing, there is a line that has been stuck in my brain and in my heart since then, and this is a revolution in your womb. A revolution in your womb. What type of revolution was that? Revolutions inspire people. Revolutions transform things. Revolutions bring new realities to people. And I think that that's what happened in the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, his life, his suffering, and his resurrection. And therefore, you and I are here today. Yes, as we said yesterday, the Lord Jesus Christ saw the people. And he said, so you have not pain, but I, I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and no one will take away, away your joy from you. Last night we're reminded that God has not brought us this far by faith to leave us in the tomb. Therefore, you and I cannot stop from singing because our hearts rejoice. More importantly, no one, even death, can take away the joy in our hearts, in us. Nothing can separate us from the love, not even death. Even though when the powerful thought that they're in their world at that time and this time and all time, they think that they had everything under control, that the instrument of, of, of death had served its purpose, their instrument of control is proved powerless by the love, by the grace, by the compassion, and by the mercy of this or this God, our God of love. Peter heard the news from the women. He jumps on his feet. And he runs to the tomb. And then the others hear the story and they don't believe. Actually, in Greek, the word that is idle tale, that is translated as an idle tale, means garbage. So if we were going to translate it into the nice English from England, it would be something like, that was a bunch of rubbish bunch of garbage. So what was the force that propelled the women and Peter to go to the tomb? Did Peter and the women go because they believe or because they doubted? I believe it doesn't matter why. Because I believe that many of us Maybe are in the same shoes. Maybe we are here because we believe, but also because we doubt. And the answer is, it doesn't matter why. You know my background coming from a Latin American country. And when I read this passage, it takes me to think of some of the songs, especially during the 70s and 80s in Latin America. At that time, the Uruguayan poet and writer Mario Benedetti wrote a poem that in Spanish, the, Span the title in Spanish is Por Que Cantamos? Directly translated means why we sing. But the idea be behind these words in Spanish goes beyond that it conveys the idea why we keep on singing. Why we keep on singing 
when we were facing the oppression, the desolation, the intervention of, of foreign policies, sadly, from our country here, that were changing regimes, eliminating governments, imposing sanctions, and bringing chaos in peoples in Latin America because they didn't want aligned with our positions in this country. The social fabric was destroyed. Hopelessness, subjection to the of entire peoples in Latin America occurred at that time. So this poem that he wrote speaks of the desire of the people in Latin America for peace and justice and the hope that will allow them to keep singing in the face of violence, pain, and loss. Let me share just a few words of this poem to give you an idea of what he was inviting us and where I find why the, the force that keep, makes us keep singing. He starts by saying, if each hour brings its death, if time is a den of thieves, the breeze carries a scent of evil, and life is just a moving target, you will ask why we sing. If, you, if our finest people are shunned, our homeland is dying of sorrow, and the human heart is shattered, you will ask why we sing. And the answer to that is, we sing because the river is humming. And when the river hums, the river hums. We sing because cruelty has no name, but we can name its destiny. We sing because the child, because everything, because the future, because the people. We sing because the survivors and our death want us to sing. Life emerges from the depths of death and despair. Our norms, patterns, and practices are disrupted. A new order, the order of life is in place, and you and I are part of this new order of life. The women ran back to tell the disciples, and Peter jumped to his feet and ran to the tomb. What was the force that drove them to go to the tomb and go back to the others? To conclude, I would like to, in your bulletin, you have this picture. This picture that was painted by a Russian artist, Nikolai Ge. The title of this of this, of this painting is Heralds of the Resurrection. This painting depicts the events that immediately preceded the hope-filled race to the tomb. And in the picture, you will see many details that we can spend the rest of the day. I don't think that you can stay, but we can put it to a vote and we can stay now. No. We, we, you can take the picture with you and reflect and look. But you will see, I, I want to point out just a couple of things that I think that are important for us to remember on this Easter Sunday. If you notice, many people say that that woman who you see in white is Mary Magdalene, that she looks like a little bird that is ready to fly. Think about that. And think about the power of Easter and resurrection. The other piece that is important is the light and the darkness. Who is in the light and who is in the darkness? In the light is Mary Magdalene, in the darkness are the Roman soldiers. But let's go back to Mary Magdalene. If you notice, she is wearing a white tunic. It is important to notice that because most of the time Mary Magdalene is associated with what? Sin, brokenness, etc., etc. That is a reflection of how the women were seen and treated. 
right? In this, in this painting, she's wearing a white tunic that represents the newness of the, new, the, the newness of life, the transformation and the new order. The light that allows us to see the truth of the love of God for all creation. Then you will notice that her hair is kind of flying and she seems to be going against something. I believe, and that's how I see it, and others see it, that she may be rushing to tell others what she had experienced in the garden by the tomb with the Lord Jesus. Or others say maybe her, 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 her hair is flying because that represents how the new order it is going against the old order that wants to take things back to where they were. Easter people, we are transformed. We are moving forward. We live in the light. A renewed relationship with God, with one another, and the entire creation has begun. The entire creation seeing mountains, trees, rivers, and valleys as we sang last night in our Easter vigil service. Why does the entire creation keep on singing? Why do we sing? It is because we know that he lives. He lives with us, is with us, today, tomorrow, and always. We are finally united in Christ, and because he lives, we can face tomorrow. And for that, we say, hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. invite you to join me in this affirmation of faith. We may keep through the longest nights. We may run our fingers over the burial clothes and still long for more. 
We believe in your beginnings. We believe that Jesus abides among us. We believe that a tomb could not hold him. We believe that Peter was there. We believe that the story is not over yet, for God is among us. In the radiant light of the resurrection, where death itself was conquered, we lift our hearts in prayer. Just as the first light of dawn breaks through the darkness, we take a deep awakening breath. We allow the world around us to come alive with the promise of new beginnings. With hearts open like empty tombs, we prepare to encounter the divine. Generous God, we give thanks for families, friends, neighbors, and loved ones who gathered today to witness and celebrate the miracle and mystery of the resurrection. For the renewal of nature with its blooming flowers and longer days, symbolizing Easter's message of rebirth. For our Muslim siblings observing Ramadan and for greater interreligious appreciation and collaboration around the world. God of our wandering hearts, receive our prayer. Abiding God, we focus on those in distress. We pray for peace among nations where war and violence rage, especially Palestine and Israel, Myanmar, Russia and Ukraine and the Sudan for safety, compassion, and welcome for refugees, asylum seekers, and all migrants, for aid and food to successfully enter Gaza along with a permanent ceasefire. God of our wandering hearts, receive our prayer. God of eternal life, we give thanks for the life and faith of all those who recently joined your table in saints especially the daughter of Lorraine Fry, Don Fry, Job Ebenezer's sister's husband, Dr. Ruben Yezedis, and Erna Nelson's brother, Wally Nobson. My siblings in Christ, who else do we pray for this morning? I invite you to pray aloud or in silence, and for those of you who participate online, you can pray by typing your prayer in the chat section of YouTube. Your resurrection, gracious Lord, is the force that gives us meaning as your people. It's the driving force of our lives, walking, bringing a message of life through our words and our actions. You have called us to be the Easter people, to be witnesses of your victory over death and violence. We are bathed in the glorious light of your Easter dawn, O oh God. We lift our prayers with hearts overflowing with the joy of your resurrection. The empty tomb, a testament to your transforming love, grants us eternal hope. And all the people of God said, Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let's share that, that peace with one another. Peace be with you.
love you all. Thanks for blocking. Hi, Freya. I met you. Hope you're having fun. Oh, I'm so sweaty. Peace be with all of you. As Easter people, we also live generously, with open hands, to receive God's blessing, but to release God's blessings to all. I invite you now to prepare our hearts in a time of generosity through our offerings. I would like to invite our young worshipers, our communion hosts, to join us here at the front. I would like to invite now the congregation to rise as you are able.
Let us pray. Risen Savior, bread of life eternal, you are the true host of this sacred table. Bless these gifts we offer, a humble reflection of your abundant love. Nourish us not only with this holy meal, but with the fire of your resurrection. May we carry the hope of new life into the world, hungering for justice and peace in your holy name. And we say, Amen. I would like to remind those of you who are participating online to prepare your bread and your wine. For those of you who are in Elberfloy, if there is anyone in the, in the chapel to follow the directions of, your, of the communion host and guiding hosts. And for those of, of, of us who are here in the, in, in the sanctuary, I would like to remind you that all the bread that we offer today is gluten-free. All the bread is gluten-free. So are we ready to celebrate communion? We are going to tell the story again. We are going to praise God, give thanks to God. Then we will tell the story of what happened, we remember, last Thursday on, this, on the Last Supper. And then we are going to remember that in communion, Jesus is with us always. Right here in the bread and the wine. Okay. Well, let's begin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. If you are willing, you can extend your arms and pray with me. It is right and a good and joyful thing that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. With Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, we pray your name and join the unending hymn. creator of heaven and earth, you so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Can you all hold this plate for us? You can hold it high. Yeah, you can do it. In the night in which our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Can we hold this cup together? Just be careful. Hold it. You can touch it. Mm -hmm. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave it for all to drink and said, take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Shed, no. Saying. I am forgiven, and I am nervous. <laughs> as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, and we say, Thank you. Thank you. You're already drinking, Nasher? <laughs> Let's now use our hands to, to ask the Holy Spirit to come upon this Food and upon all people. Pour out your Holy Spirit in this meal and make us one in this community of faith and with your people throughout the world. Glory and praise to you, O God, author of life, word made flesh, power of the Most High, now and forever. And we said, Amen. And now we join our voices in the prayer that the Lord Jesus Christ has taught us. As it is a practice in this congregation, we say these words in the language 
in the translation, in the version, or in the words that the Spirit has written in your hearts. Let us join our voices by saying, Our Creator in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria, por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. We extend our hands. Can you hold this? As congregation to share this communion. Can you hold this? To extend this, to share with all those participate online as a symbol of the unity in the Lord Jesus, whose table extends beyond this building. For our siblings in Christ online, this is the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus given for you. Amen. And for those of we are here, we say this. Come, share. Share in this sacred meal and celebrate the love that conquests death. And we say, Please be seated.
Cristo que hemos recibido en este día, nos fortalezca y nos guarde en la verdadera fe para la vida eterna. May the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that we have received today strengthen us and keep us in his grace. And we said, Living Christ, we gather at your table, hearts ablaze with Easter joy. Nourished by your word and sacrifice, empower us to share your love and serve the world in your name. And we say, Amen. Amen. Good morning again. So, was it true what we heard last night? That the tomb was empty? Right? He is risen. Good morning again, dear siblings in Christ. It has been a joy and a delight to be gathered in this place. It is wonderful to be in this space full with the spirit, with the force that gives us meaning, with the driving force that leads us to be the people that keep on singing of the good news that we have received today. Today, it is just the beginning of a week, the gathering of the church in one place. And now as the Easter people, we scatter in the world to bring the good news of the resurrection. We are church every day, everywhere, all the time. Let's do that. Are we ready for that? If no, we start again. <laughs> we, are, we, are we ready? Yeah. Now I think that we can continue. Again, may you have a wonderful rest of the celebration of Easter with your families. May this, uh, I hope that this was a time of when you are refreshed in your spirit and energized to be the witnesses of the Lord. I would like now to thank everyone who is here for the first, the second, or one more time. And again, if you have a chance, maybe we can shake hands at the back later of the service. And remember, this is a place for you, where no matter where you are in your faith journey, no matter where you are at and you are coming from, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we all are welcome. Please rise as you are able to receive the final benediction. God who names us, Christ who claims us, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in each one of us, bless us and remain with every one of us always. And we said, Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah! Go in peace. Serve the risen one. <laughs>